partner, Hannah Mills, and we started obviously Bespoke and created the deal sourcing business, which has provided the foundation for our investment opportunities and things that we're doing. You know, one thing I love, which um, actually sort of like rings true with a lot of people. So obviously you're a big sort of a motivator and, and sort of a backing of our property newbie community, which is mm. just anyone that's new to property wanting to jump in. But they're in some respects in a similar position to you in the sense that you came over, you didn't really have, you didn't really know anyone in the industry. You didn't really know, you probably lost a lot of your contacts as well, being out of the country yeah. for 15 years. So you were starting fresh. How do you go from that to, to sort of starting to build your network, your business? I mean, mm. what sort of steps did you take? Because you literally came in with like nothing and, and we'll talk about Bespoke um, a little shortly because that's, that's just an amazing story. Yeah. Um, but how do you go about, so like people like myself, like 12 months ago, I didn't know anyone in the industry. How mm. do you start from that and start making steps to, to sort of getting your name out there and, and building a good network and of uh, support and friends around you and even business partners? So working for the Russo British Chamber of Commerce, I was pretty much an introducer or a, a massive networker. Mm -hmm. So I was introducing businesses to one another and I was always knew people's names, took the business cards, I'd introduce them to each other and, and kind of was, I hadn't done it for a long time, but I was a very good networker at the time. Coming back to the UK, um, I thought I would buy into a network. So basically join a training academy or kind of a community whereby there was already a thousand or two thousand people in that community which you can then get the people that have same vision the same sort mm. of dreams the same pretty much objectives mm. so this financial freedom you know kind of time freedom stuff and i thought that would be an easier way to do it rather than kind of holding a sign up and saying <laughs> here i am i'm back yeah. you know kind of. <laughs> and i think the second part to it is is that you just have to be honest and truthful and to and sort of yourself and a lot of people kind of have this mask they go to networking events or they go to you know property training you know sort of academies or whatever and they try and put in this mask and try and be people they're not and I think the thing for me was that I'm guessing I'm at an age where I don't really want to be anybody else apart from myself yeah and for a lot of the time when you're working in the corporate world you're trying to position yourself as this honorable you know kind of person and deep down you're you know, a little bit different maybe in real life. But for me, it was more of a case of going to these events, saying it how it is. Yeah. If you don't like something, say it. Yeah. If you do like something, pray, you know, praise the person. And people kind of thought, oh, actually, this guy seems like he's quite genuine and quite honest. And I don't understand why it's such a big deal for people. Yeah. See, I was talking to um, the Fontaine bro. So um, uh, for anyone that hasn't watched it, it's it's the video before this one. Mm. Um, first ever ones to kick off the podcast. And one thing that I noticed about them, which I brought up, is the fact that they literally just do not care what other people think in sense uh, in the sense that they don't have to. They don't feel like they have to put on a front. Mm. They're always themselves. If you see, and watch any of their YouTube videos, it's just yeah. so humbling because they'll be, they'll be there in their their hoodies and their tracksuit bottoms, and it doesn't mean that they're not smashing it. Yeah, it's just a case of they will just never change, and they will always be them and they'll always be honest and i do feel like sometimes in uh, i guess it's sort of just all aspects of life you, you kind of almost feel like you have to prove yourself to people but i think the world that it the world that we're living in now is shifting towards just being honest and and just being genuine which obviously yeah. is, is sort of like worked for yourself especially building the sort of network that you got now well for me it's second nature and it's mm. kind of i don't understand why when people are brought up you're you're brought up to be truthful honest you know sort yeah. of diligent and the rest of it and for whatever reason, people have this impression that you, by by doing things which are not according to those principles, you'll get to somewhere quicker. Yeah. But I think me and you share the same value in terms of that long term, that's never going to work. Yeah. And I see a lot, I was thinking actually in the shower this morning, <laughs> before I came down to Birmingham. <laughs> I do a lot of my thinking in the shower. I bet and you I, do. And I, <laughs> and, and I thought to myself, it really frustrates me that people uh, use their bad experience is an excuse to be able to try and con or cheat people um, with something else. Mm -hmm. So for, I'll give you an example. A lot of people have gone through training programs and lost money and they think it's then okay to say, I will try and do the same to another person yeah. in order to recuperate this, the money I've lost. It's immoral, so, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I think to myself, well, just use that as a learning curve, put it to bed, you know, kind of pat yourself on the back and say, you know, <laughs> get, get on with it sort of yeah. thing and, 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 and I think that's the, the thing which a lot of people fail to do they kind of 
I think it's easier to take a shortcut somewhere. Mm. And the same in the deal sourcing world. So I see a lot of people trying to sell deals where they've done no due diligence. They've done no real kind of um, informational checks on things and they're just passing brochures across. And I think to myself, yeah. look, if you're going to be doing things, do it in an honest, diligent, kind of professional way. Yeah. The same as you'd want to expect from a doctor. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't want to go to a doctor and say, you know, he just goes on the internet and types <laughs> in, you know, whatever whatever <laughs> disease and say, yeah, hang on a second. Uh, yeah, you should be doing this. You'd, you'd pr expect somebody to be a bit more kind of detailed with everything they do, but also honest and professional. Yeah. How have you found sort of um, deal sourcing? So you've...